Hello everybody, Yom Tov, it's Monday and yes I'm here, please don't faint, I know it's Monday and I know I miss a lot of Mondays, but I'm actually here and it's a, it's a miracle on its own, so like I said, please don't faint or check your diaries or anything like that, this is definitely me and I'm definitely here and I hope you are all well, in fact how the hell are you, how are you doing, how was your weekend? Did you all have a good weekend? I really do hope that you did. Um, I would love to tell you that I had a really good weekend. It started out as if I was going to have a fairly decent weekend. Um, you know, I was busy um, catching up with readings that had fallen into the backlog. And I did private readings as well as the ones that I put up um, in the haven um, I must admit by the time Sunday came round I was pretty tired I was pretty bloated the eye is still not gone down to me because you know what affects mostly the right hand side of me um, so I think that was sort of a reflection of I'd probably overdone it so but you know Sunday I just took as easy as I could um, but then I started to get I mean it's been on and off for over a week and a half but I've been getting a bit of a toothache um, now the history of this tooth is the fact that I can't I think it was actually the back end of last summer and I had a bit of a wobbly tooth. Um, anyway, it it was about just to come out in its own. Because, uh, you know, I am getting older and, you know, it does happen. These things do happen. And um, I noticed that, as just as an aside, but since I had my uh, radiotherapy, and it's 20 years since I had that, that um, I've had a lot of dental problems. Um, it's certainly, with it being my thyroid and everything, it's certainly um, weakened a lot of my teeth. And, you know, I've had problems practically nearly every year since then. Well, anyway, this tooth, <clears throat> the dentist pulled it out, but it snapped at the root. And there were a couple of shards and what have you there, and he said, well, I could go in and dig them out, but it's going to be, you're going to be sitting there for a lot longer. I'd need to give you a lot more, is it lidocaine or novocaine or, I don't know, whatever it is. It always makes me giggle. I don't know what, what it is, but, you know, after the first couple of stabs with a needle, um, after that he could inject as much as he wanted because all I would do is sit and giggle which of course took him all the longer to, to get my tooth sorted out but um, he said look if it's not causing you any problems we'll just leave things as they are you know and I am a firm believer if it ain't broke don't fix it right but over this past week and a half it has decided that it's going to come to life and it's going to cause me some problems and it was so bad last night that I could hardly sleep I just it didn't matter what I did it didn't matter how many painkillers I took I've got this stuff called Ambasol which um, you sort of put some on your finger and you rub it in to the gum and um, you know and around the affected area and you put two amounts on and that should make you good for about three hours. I was lucky to be good for half an hour. Um, I'm going to have to buy a new bottle of this stuff. That's how bad it's got. So nine o'clock this morning, I was on the phone to the dentist. And they've then got to ring you back to do a thing called triage. And it's just a case of going through all your medical history. And then them getting you to describe exactly how the pain feels, whereabouts in your mouth it is, 
they check that up against your dental records, which of course they've got beside them. And if everything is kosher after that, then it's up to them what they decide to do. Most of the time these days, they're telling people to self-treat at home. In my case, I've got to go in tomorrow afternoon. So, I know they're going to do something invasive. They've already said that. It looks like they're going to be digging into my gum and digging out this, these bits of root and what have you and jagged other little bits that are sitting there. God knows what else they're going to do while they're in there. Um, so what I'm planning on doing today is I'm going to make videos to cover the rest of the week. So I do apologise if you see me all this week wearing the same top, but I don't want to make my laundry any bigger than it has to be, to be quite honest with you, because I don't really think anybody cares what I wear as long as they can listen to a story or hear me yak, because an awful lot of you say that listening to my voice is quite soothing, um, which is a wonderful compliment and thank you very much. Um, but I don't want to let you down over your videos. I don't know if I'm going to end up getting stitches in my gum, which means I might not be able to speak very well over a couple of days. So rather than have you miss out, I'm going to sort everything out tonight and then tomorrow morning I can go to the podiatrist and get that sorted out. I should have been there nearly six months ago, but because of the, the lockdown and what have you, that's shoved everything into one corner. Um, they're only taking um, on, uh, on a need, need basis. Um, so they're, they're definitely seeing me tomorrow because if the podiatrist doesn't sort my toes out shortly, I will be um, auditioning for a role as a sloth in um, some kind of nature video because that's how long my toenails are now. I'll be hanging upside down from a tree. Um, and you know, and I think I fit the role quite well because when I'm not doing videos, I'm really always asleep and with long toenails. And I mean, I know my fingernails have been longer than this, um, but you know, long toenails, long fingernails. I think I'm perfect for the part. And then, um, and then they said, you know, you have to come masked. So I've been onto eBay and I saw this woman was doing homemade masks uh, for charity. So I got my mask and it looks like that. So that's my mask. And that's going to go on me tomorrow when I'm talking to the dentist. How he's going to work through this, I don't know. But I think I'm going to have to take the mask off. But that's what my mask looks like anyway. And and so much of the money raised is going to um, cancer research. So um, that's that. Um, oh, and speaking of that... My friend Lorraine is, she now she's lost all her hair. Um, she's halfway through the treatments. She's got nine more lots of chemo to go. And they've told her that if this doesn't work, that's it, it's the end of the line. So again, we're keeping everything positive and um, I know she's not feeling very well. She's excessively tired. Um, she's got a new wig. I think it's called Deirdre or Doreen or something like that. Probably Deirdre, I think. And it looks an awful lot like her own hair. So that's a good thing. Um, and while I'm talking to you now, this toothache is, it's like, you know when you've got a pain and then it's got echoes going on to it, so it's like, 
it's like one of those, um, you know, you hit, like a tuning fork. You only hit that and then you wow Well, it's like that. So I get the pain and then it's like waves and waves and waves. And it's right down here. And there's an actual lump right there. And it's, um, it's tender, to say the least. So I took um, some Ambasol before I came to talk to you. And um, I just wanted to have a quick chat with you. And then by the time I'm done, I'm going to take some more. Because like I said, it's no good, good at saying, oh, you can't, can only put it on every three hours. I won't last that long. Not with this pain. It is atrocious. And as we all know, there's nothing worse than toothache, is it? Can you imagine when you've got toothache and earache at the same time? That is absolutely horrendous, isn't it? Isn't that just the worst bloody thing? And of course, last night I just felt like crying. This pain was so bad. And if I could have reached in and just ripped it all out, I would have been a happy bunny. So though that those are my woes, anyway. Um, I do hope the rest of you are f f faring an awful lot better than I am. Um, there is one thing that I saw in the news that I did want to have a, a bit of a mini rant about, I think. And I saw this thing about you know, me gains court case against the newspapers. And our latest claim is that it's the tabloids forced her to, um, uh, what's it? The tabloids made the break between herself and her father. Now, I don't know about you. Can you imagine anything stopping you talking to your child? I mean, can you, can you actually imagine that? Is there anything in this world, you know, if you love your child, is there anything in this world that would stop you? From, sorry, it's this hair, it's getting on my nose. I think my hairdresser's coming this weekend. And uh, believe you me, I, I desperately need this fringe cutter because it's constantly falling into my eyes and it's seriously getting on my nose. Um, I cannot imagine anything that would stop me talking to my children. Not that they've got anything to say to the papers about me, because I'm so boring. But even if they did, I might not like what they've done. And I'd tell them that I'd, I didn't like what they'd done. But I wouldn't stop talking to them. I mean, why, why would I stop talking to my children? And the thing is, what I don't get is that up to when she got with Harry, she had a very, very close relationship with her father. Then she gets married to Harry, and then literally from the wedding, he never hears from her again. You know, apart from that letter that she said was intensely private, but she showed five friends, you know, and Harry saw it, and other people saw it, but it was intensely private. Well, if it was that private, why didn't, why did she run it past our friends, this letter, and all five of them? If it was so private, knowing that anyone can let slip to anybody these days. You can't trust anyone not to say a word to the press about something, especially if you're, you know, if you're famous. Why didn't you just write the letter, stick it in the envelope and post it to him? Or failing that, why didn't she? Because 
So few people write letters these days, don't they? So few people put pen to paper and stick things in the post. You know, it's it's not like it was, you know, even 10 years ago or 20 years ago. She could have emailed him. And, you know, just done it that way, private email. I just don't understand and why she would stop speaking to him. Because, you know, he'd sold his story to the papers or they'd offered him money for his story. But she just, she seems to have this knack of discarding things that are no longer any use to her. You know, like a dog. The dog that she had that was a baby and she had for years and years, but it didn't like Harry, so it had to go. No, that's not how it works. You know, if, if I'd had a pet and it didn't like my hubby, then I would just have to say to him, you're just gonna have to avoid it. I'm not parting with that. I don't about you either. But I'm not going to part with that, with the cat. So, no. You work on it, don't you? You don't just, you know, use things and then drop them to one side. That's not what you do. But she seems to make a habit of it. You know, she doesn't, she always claims she doesn't have a, um, a good relationship with any of her family. But there's family photographs to prove otherwise. So, do you understand why she tells so many lies? Because I don't understand why she tells so many lies. Because they're always found out. I mean, she's, she's a compulsive liar and manipulator. You know, whether the, I don't know about the narcissism and stuff like that. Um, but it just strikes me. That she's a liar and she can't be trusted. She can't be trusted with anything. And I think that she wouldn't know the truth if it's sat up and bitter. I mean, she discarded her first husband and sent him a wedding and engagement rings in the post. Just like that. He didn't even have a clue. As far as she was concerned, it was over. She didn't even tell him. You know? But, um, you know, I've got a feeling that... I mean, I did say give it five years, didn't I? Um, and I got married in 2018. So... I reckon they will be... They'll be divorced by... If it's not next year, it'll be the year after. And Harry's going to be the big loser there. Because unless he stays in America, he's not going to get to bring Archie over here to the UK if he comes back to the UK. Because we've got these thing called um, YouGov polls and Harry's approval rating has gone down. 40% to where he stood like this time last year and for considering he was you know the favourite that is a hell of a drop a real hell of a drop I mean the Queen's always top of the list um, because the Queen is is well loved I mean she really is um, but I mean I think Harry was second to her. Um, but now he's really unpopular over here. The only one who's more unpopular than him is Andrew. Who I do think should, you know, either do some kind of video call or something to members of the FBI and just talk to them. Because I've got a feeling... If he was a set foot in America, I think he'd be arrested. 
I, I really do. I think he would be arrested. As for Glenn Maxwell, I think it depends what kind of deal they offer her to whether or not she spills the beans about Andrew. And they're supposed to be friends. But I think it will all depend on how many years she's going to get in prison. Because prison's definitely where she's going. There's no ifs or buts about it. I think she'll probably end up spending the rest of her life in prison. And the only way that she's going to get out of that is by dropping some big names. If who else was involved. She's going to have to do some kind of deal. And I think one of the sacrificial lambs on that table will be Andrew. And to be quite honest with you, my personal opinion, which it is just my personal opinion, but because he's treated everybody with so much disrespect, I think he deserves to have that bloody book thrown at him. I know it'll break the Queen's heart, and I wouldn't hurt the Queen for the world, but... You know, the thing is, he's 60 now. And, you know, oh, fair enough, this was 20 years ago. Doesn't matter. You know, the laws for having sex are different in the United States to what they are in the UK. You know, your boys and girls are allowed teenagers are allowed to have sex from the age of 16 legally but it's not like that in America I know it depends on what state that you happen to be in and Virginia Jeffrey, I believe her name is she was 17 um, over here that would be legal but from what I can understand it wasn't and he probably had been I don't know whether or not he'd been told he was she was just a young prostitute I don't know that doesn't make any difference Jeffrey Epstein was a paedophile and he was a disgusting piece of pond scum and you are judged by the company you keep. So, but we'll, we'll end, I'm looking at the time here, and we're going to end on a happy note, because Beatrice went and got herself married in secret. And, you know, it shows you in how much esteem the Queen holds her. To lend her the tiara that she herself wore, on her wedding day in 1947 and to give her one of her favourite gowns to wear as a wedding dress because Beatrice is a um, second eldest granddaughter I mean her eldest granddaughter is Zara Tyndall Princess Anne's daughter but Beatrice is Andrew's eldest and she's, she's always been very fond of Beatrice and Eugenie. Very fond of them. Um, that's why, I mean, Eugenie got her pick of the um, tiaras. Oh, yes, by the way, I want to clear up something. And I don't know whether any of you know the truth behind Megan's tantrum over the not getting the tiara that she wanted. The tiara that she wanted actually doesn't belong to the Queen. Although it's in the Queen's collection, it's housed with other th items of the Queen's jewellery. But it's mostly held on display. And the tiara is called the Fife tiara. That's F-I-F-E. And there's necklace to go with it there's a brooch and there's earrings and um, the long dangly earrings made of the most beautiful emeralds and diamonds it's called like a parure of diamond necklace just loads of emeralds and and diamonds 
um, the brooch is like big central emerald with diamonds all the way around it and then the um, tiara is just these stunning emeralds, huge emeralds going around here. Well, Queen Victoria gave that set to her eldest son's eldest daughter when she got married. Now, Queen Victoria's eldest son became Edward VII. He was known as Bertie in the family. When he married Princess Alexandra of Denmark, their eldest daughter was called Louise. And when she got married, she married the Duke of Fife. So she became Princess Louise, Duchess of Fife, and Queen Victoria got all this set um, made for her as a wedding present. So they're not worn, they are a collector's item, but they belong to the Fife family. You know, the Dukes and Duchesses of Fife. I don't actually know if that title's died out now or not. But um, anyway, Meghan wanted that set. That's why she had the wedding dress that she did, because she got that, she had seen them previously. She got her wedding dress made the way it was, so it would show off the emeralds. She wanted the long earrings in. She wanted that, this beautiful tiara and the brooch. She wanted the lot. And the Queen said no. And she'd gone to Harry and she'd said, you know, why can't I have them? You know, they're sitting there with all the other things. That's what I want. So Harry had actually gone and said what Meghan wants, Meghan gets. And the Queen apparently had to give Meghan a right royal telling off and explain to her that's not how we do things in this family. When, you know, when I offer you something, it is a gift. And when it's, when I offer you a tiara, it's to be returned. Unless I give it to you as a gift, those jewels are not in my remit to give. They belong via Queen Victoria to the Duff family, but we keep them here on display and the general public can see them, you know, when they can go around Buckingham Palace and have a, a bit of a view. Um, and she just told her, no, you can't have them. But you can have a choice of some a couple of these. And Megan ended up choosing the one that she wore on her big day. But the one that she wore, they were paste. They weren't real diamonds. Because if you look at them, they sparkled far too much. Much, much more than di real diamonds would sparkle. They weren't like Swarovski crystals or anything like that, but they were paste. They weren't the real thing. Eugenie wore the real thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, by this point, I think the Queen was probably starting to get the measure of Meghan. But I think she's very, very clever in how she does things. And I think she was probably just playing a waiting game just to see how far the pair of them would go. And to be quite honest with you, I think the way that Meghan and Harry have played this, well, we're gonna see what it's like, we'll give you 12 months and see how it goes. I think they've pulled so many dirty tricks on the Queen. I mean, the recent one being about the Commonwealth. Um. I don't think we I don't I don't know whether to welcome Harry back or not, but I can definitely tell you, and it is my opinion, mind, 
I can only speak for me and my family. I have spoken to other people, you know, not in person, but online. And, you know, apart from the gen the younger generation who think that Harry and Meghan are all, it's wonderful. The general consensus of opinion is she can stay where she is. That's obviously where she's wanted to be all the time. So she can stay where she is. We might, in time, forgive him. But it's going to take a long time for a lot of us to forget what he's done to the Queen. And how he's treated the people who loved him. So, it is what it is. So that's my mini rant out the way. That's to sort of try and distract me from this bloody awful toothache. And like I said, you're going to be seeing me wearing the same thing for the rest of the week. Apart from the spooky sessions. Because I won't wear purple for the spooky sessions, obviously. But um, this is what I'm going to be wearing for the folk tales And for your true crime. And for... Um, the reading tomorrow, which is going to be for Anne. Her name's Anne. She's a havener. I've known her oh, for nearly as long as the haven's been going. And um, it's Anne's turn for her reading tomorrow. So um, I'm going to be sorting all of that out, just in case I've got to nurse a sore mouth and I can't talk to you. So at least you're covered for the rest of the week. For those of you who want to watch. And then if you could uh, just do what you always do. Please like my videos because it really does help. It, 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 it really does help me. And you know, I'd rather that you didn't do anything. But if you don't like what I've said, don't dislike it. Just don't do anything. But if you've liked what I've said or... You just happen to like me, then please press the like button. Because it does help and it makes me smile. You know? Um so yeah, that's about it. I think I've yucked enough and bent your ears enough for one day. And I am more than ready for some more amber saw on this. And uh, I think I'm ready for some more remorse as well. So on that happy note, guys. I am going to say bye bye to you for now and I hope wherever you are in the world, no matter what time of day it is, I hope it is a good one for you. I'm sending you, all of you, all my love as always. Please take care of yourselves, be kind to each other and you are going to see me again very, very soon. So lots and lots of love to you for now. Take care, guys. Bye for now. Bye-bye.